Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Owen and AJ Talks. I'm Owen Finch, and I'm here with... AJ Talon, and today it's a review of Danny Phantom, Season 1, Episode 6. Now... Yep, this is a... Well, a lot of people are probably asking, what happened to this video? You were supposed to do it uh, in the last video, because you said, uh, you know, in splitting images, you were going to do both. Well, the video went long, so we decided just to split them apart, so that way, like, the video wasn't two hours. So that's why we're... Uh, Much like how uh, um, appropriate, because, uh, you know, Danny gets split apart in this episode, and Tucker gets split apart, and Dash gets split apart, and Paulina gets split apart. Everyone gets split apart in this episode. Yeah. So AJ now... AJ and I now have figured out a new system now. So pretty much what's going to happen is basically like any videos and any reviews of shows that like are connected when it comes to episodes. If there's episodes that aren't, don't have like a connection, like it's not a two part or, you, you know, uh, there's certain episodes that are connected. We'll do them together. Um, that's basically what's going to happen. So since, you know, there's no relation to the plots with this one and, you know, uh, the next one that we're doing is, uh, What's the next one? It's the one where Vlad shows up. I forget what. what bitter reunions. Bitter reunions. Uh, basically, uh, they'll be on their own, you know, since they're not connected and all that type of stuff. But you know, we decided to do it that way because uh, apparently when we try to do multiple episodes, the videos seem to run long, so that's why we're doing it this way. Um, but you know, we finally have a system now. Like we've been trying to work on a system for a while. We finally officially have one now, which is great. So. Yeah, so uh, that should help with editing because, you know, like you won't have a four hour video of anything. And also, it's just, um, it'd probably be easier to get stuff out quicker. And yeah, you know, we don't have to worry about like ex ex uh, extending shit too long. Yeah, yep. exactly. Of course, we'll still record stuff same day, most likely, but we'll just make them separate recordings. Yep. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, uh, this episode is called uh, What You Want. It uh, released on April 30th, 2004. It was um, written by Siv Ventress, directed by Wincat Alaka, Butch Hartman, and Richard Bowman. Uh, and the special guest is uh, Perry Gilpin, who is the ghost Desiree. Yeah, she's like the the ghost that they introduce in this episode. Uh, obviously, and Butch Hartman. Desiree, like desire, your heart's desire. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, it makes Whatever. sense. But yeah, Butch Hartman, obviously, we recognize because you created this show. Uh, who was the other name you said after him? Because I'm fairly sure I've heard that name before. I think he, I think he was probably in the, he was probably in the Poindexter episode. Uh, Richard Bowman. Yeah, he, I think he wrote one of those. I think he wrote an, an episode that we've recognized before, so. Um. Yeah. I'm not too familiar with the, uh, like, main cast of Danny Phantom writers. Like, who's a guest writer and who's, like, you know, a common writer. Yeah. Um, but I've so. definitely heard the name Richard Bowman before, um, so. I definitely recognize him. So that's good. Um, yeah, let's just, uh, you know, uh, let's just get right into it as I try. Oh, my gosh. Of course, of course. As we try to set our alarm so we don't go, go too long. Uh, well, yeah, I, I was trying to make this discreet. But, of course, uh, I asked out of the app. And then, uh, you know, um, my the timer we set. Good thing I caught this, by the way. Remember how we talked about how we're going to do timers? Like, you're going to do 25 minutes, and I'm going to do 35 minutes? I almost just did an hour and 35 minutes. I would have been way off. It would have been a little much. Yeah, okay. So, three, two, one, hit your timer, I guess, because we were, we, 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 we were yep. so discreet. We did a terrible job. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, right. I start. Sorry. Um, so, um, the episode begins with, uh, it's fun, a narration from Tucker. Uh, this I'm happy about this that uh, we get like a Tucker centric episode because um, you know so far it's been very Danny focused makes sense he's the main character but I really like that um, you know we we get a couple episodes of Danny and like learning about him his personality his goals and now we get an episode about one of the main supporting characters Tucker uh, it's also good because we as we said in episode one Tucker and Sam were like insufferable yeah. so now we get an episode like. You're really showing like who Tucker is, what makes him likable, um, and I think this placement in uh, also makes sense because um, this is pretty early on where it makes sense where Tucker isn't seeing all the downsides of Danny's powers, right? But uh, so it makes sense since Danny hasn't had powers too long. You know, it's like wow, it's so cool. You know, I, if I, if my friends had powers like these, I, I would be in the same position as Tucker, where I would kind of be jealous of them. Yeah. I remember too, like uh, 
you know, I think this makes up for it because, like, the last episode in Splitting Images, uh, Tucker really wasn't in it all that much. Like, he really didn't, like, you know, because it was more about Sam and, like, Danny stuff going on. So I think this kind of uh, fixed that issue. Not that it was an issue, but I'm saying, like, you know, it gave Tucker a bit more screen time. And then uh, it, this was kind of cool because it was kind of cool to see, like, the story told and, like, his point of view. Because, like, in, I believe it's, like, season two, um, there's an episode that's told in, like, Jazz's point of view when Danny's fighting, like, the pirate guy. But, like, he's not a pirate anymore. He's, like, the cowboy in that episode. But, like, you know, he's, like, that kid. So, like, um, I'd, I kind of wish, you know, every season. Excuse me, he's kid. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I kind of like that, like, one once every season. I kind of wish they did in season three where, like, we could have had, like, an episode told around, like, a certain character. And I like that, you know, this one was Tucker just because, like, it kind of made sense because, like, we didn't really get, like, Tucker's perspective too much of how he felt about Danny's yeah. powers because, like, we've kind of heard Sam's perspective on it, but we really didn't hear too much about, like, Tucker's perspective on it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Although, um, you know, you mentioning POV episodes. This episode is really good, and I really like Tucker. He's one of my favorite characters. Although I think that also kind of highlights that out of the three main characters, or even four if you include Jazz, um, Sam is, like, one of the weaker ones. Um, I like Sam, but, like, she's definitely not one of my favorites. And, uh, you know, unfortunately the show, I feel like, doesn't give her a, a lot of shine compared to the others. Yeah, which is um, really yeah. weird, um, considering the fact, you know, that much of, the, like, the later seasons, it kind of focuses around, like, the buildup of, like, Danny and Sam's relationship and everything like that. So it kind of sucks that, like, you know... I've I, I've obviously watched the show a few times, but like I haven't really gone and reviewed it. You kind of forget early on, like they don't really when they when they're not really when they weren't really doing that. Sam's just kind of like not as great of a character as all of them are and all that type of stuff. Yeah, although for that's uh, that's a show problem, but for this episode, uh, Sam is basically not in it. She's only in a couple scenes, and she's not even involved with the plot. Um, that was a good decision, I believe, because her being around kind of would just been extra baggage. This episode is about Tucker and Danny's friendship and their relationship. And I think Sam being there would have just been her third wheeling. Yeah. Uh, having basically yeah. taken her out of the episode and like focusing on these two, I think was the right decision. I agree. And I thought so, like the way they were, you know, because <laughs> typically they either could have just had her like not in it, but I like that she was still like in it, but they gave a reason why she wasn't like doing all that much um, and everything like that, you know. And I thought like, you know, it wasn't like. Because it would have been weird if, like, they didn't have her in it at all. Because it's like, well, where's Sam has been all this time? Like, I kind of like that they, like, had her in it, but there was, like, a reason why she wasn't, like, doing too much and all that type of stuff. So. Right. So the episode begins. This cold open is uh, Tucker and Danny at a, um, at a, like, flea market kind of deal. Um, just kind of walk, walking around. Um, a small, uh, they're at this fortune teller. They don't really believe she's, you know, legit. They uh they're kind of just walking around doing you know hanging out like normal kids yeah um and um Tucker you know says that uh they, Danny and him have shared everything as long as they can remember and um, that kind of ends up being like a big plot point throughout this episode um they're like really close friendship and like how they share things um, the the plot is kind of kicked off by a really funny thing where a, um, a mom is, like, dragging her, like, crying kid who, like, really wants cotton candy. The kid's, like, had too much candy today. Um, and the genie in the bottle that the fortune teller had hears uh, the kid screaming that she wants the cotton candy. Yeah. And uh, grants her wish, basically. Because uh, I think um, uh, the, um, the genie like, bottle gets, like, knocked over, right? Yeah, her, like, the kid's, like, balloon, like, wraps around the bottle. And like, right, right. I was like, I was like, I, I know the kid like knocks the bottle over, but I can't remember how. Yeah, right. Her like balloon uh, knocks it over off the table and releases Desiree the ghost genie. Um, you know, because um, we mentioned, you know, we compare Ben Ten to Danny Phantom a lot. Yeah. Um, something I think we had a complaint about a bit was like, um, for Ben, he's not just fighting aliens; he's fighting like magic and like uh cryptids and monsters and things like that and humans as well um it's not just aliens even though aliens are like the premise of the show um in episode two dan the magic amulet isn't really it, it's like said not to be a ghost amulet like it's just a magic amulet right um i kind of wish we got more than just like ghost villains uh even the human villains there's only like two the men guys in white and freak show um, I think I would have liked it if Desiree was, like, a genie, not, like, a ghost genie, like, an actual genie. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, kind of diversify the villains a bit so they're not all ghosts. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, but still, Desiree is still a cool character. I really like her. Her design's really cool. Her voice is great. Perry yeah. does a great job. Um, and her power is really interesting. So basically, she, um, whenever anyone says, like, I want something or I wish something, she grants the wish, but kind of gives it a monkey's paw uh, trade off effect. She's so, Flying Dutchman little all over again. Yeah, the Flying Dutchman. Yeah, funny because we just did the uh, Flying Dutchman in a SpongeBob. Um, so since Desiree is released, she wishes, uh, grants the girl's wish to have cotton candy by, by basically like haunting the cotton candy machine and causing cotton candy to go flooding everywhere. Yeah. Uh, there is a funny moment where the girl is like still crying and then she sees the flood, like the tidal wave of cotton candy yeah. and is like super happy as she is like hit face first with all the cotton candy. Uh, we never see her again. I, you know, she just dies, I guess. She died from cotton candy. There's also another funny bit where, like, everyone's running away. And I know I typically have had this complaint with, like, Ben where, like, no people, someone knows sells it. But this one actually worked in Danny's favor. Like, one of the people got, like, really happy. And you see, like, in, like, the flea market tent, it's, like, dental work. So, obviously, he's happy about this because they're going to eat all the cotton candy. He's basically going to get, like, you know, customers. Like, yeah, like, all the money, office. yeah. So, like, that, yeah. that was pretty realistic. I was, I mean, it was pretty realistic, like, in a funny way and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah. But I, um, before we kind of talk about the next scene, I also kind of want to talk about, I really liked this, like, when Tucker was mentioned that him and Danny shared everything, and, like, it shows them, like, buying the same thing, and they, like, going to share them. Because, like, we never really got, like, a perspective of, like, Danny and Tucker's friendship, really. We kind of just, like, have known they've been friends, but this was kind of, like, the first time they've really, like, talked about their relationship that, like, they had. Yeah, like, how close they are. We've known, we know they know they've known each other for a long time because last episode, Denny mentions, like, they've known all, all known each other since, like, the, like in the second grade, and they're all, like, 14. So they've known each other for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Danny goes ghost um, and begins to fight Desiree. Well, Desiree asks Danny what his desire is, and uh, <laughs> I like how Danny just, like, makes, like, ignores her and makes a quip. Because later on in the episode, Danny beats her by basically granting his wish. <laughs> and yeah. he says, like, wow, I wish I thought of that five days ago. So, and uh, you know, when Danny says that, in hindsight, yeah, if Danny just, like, said, I wish you got to, you know, I wish you were in my thermos, or I wish you went away, the whole plot of the episode would have just never happened. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So I like that they She asked him, like, what is your desire? So if he just answered her, <laughs> yeah, the whole plot wouldn't would have happened. Yeah. He could have just done a quip and said, I wish you'd just go away. And she would have been like, oh, guess I gotta go away now. This is it. This is, I, guess, I guess this is right. it. Um, um, so yeah, like, obviously Danny doesn't know how her power works, so, like, I can't blame him. Yeah. But, yeah, like Danny right. said, in hindsight, he should have thought of that a while ago. Um, but, yeah, Danny begins to fight her. But um, during the fight, Danny gets a uh, certain ability that he, this becomes, like, his main ability throughout the show. And I was surprised they waited this long. Uh, this is episode six, and it's like I'm, I'm, like coming back and rewatching this. You kind of forget that like Danny had learned all of his abilities like on screen. Like he yeah. learned how to overshadow in episode two, and he learned to shoot his um, ecto energy blasts in episode six. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, what happens is Danny can shoot a green laser out of his hands. Um, uh, you know, so this basically knocked Desiree away, and she, like, gets away. But, um, you know, Danny goes back down to Tucker, and, um, you know, Tucker's comment here also kind of sets up the episode. He's not, he's, he's, um, really happy for Danny. He's like, wow, see, this is the, like, wow, you get a, you, you keep get unlocking new powers. This yeah. is, like, the best, you know, your powers have, like, no downside. It's awesome. Um, and then, obviously, the joke is, like, they high-five, and then Danny accidentally, like, knocks Tucker away. Which was cool because, you know, he hasn't, he just learned the power, so it makes sense he doesn't know how to, like, control it yet and all that type of stuff. Right. So obviously the joke is, like, Dan Tucker's like, well, your powers have no downside. And then he gets knocked away. But also it shows from Tucker's perspective, yeah, Danny's powers have, doesn't, don't have a downside. Um, yeah, this was good. Which, you know, obviously, like, you know, he, even though he's friends with Danny, yeah, I, I don't blame him for thinking that. Yeah. Like, obviously, you know, for, you know, like, Danny can't control it. Like, you know, his pants are going invisible and falling down. And, like, they keep getting in the way of um, his, like, social life. Like, a few episodes from now, we get the episode where, um, like, Danny's ghost fighting is getting in the way of, like, his curfew and, like, schoolwork. Um, yeah. 
So is this whole? Yeah. I know this whole episode is sort of like Tucker's perspective. Then you know, so it's like Tucker telling this story, and like, cause this seems that he's not even in, right? So like, the scenes that he's not in is this just like, cause it's also kind of weird, cause this episode's told to like Tucker's perspective, but like obviously like the scene that he's in, like you know when Danny goes to like see his parents and stuff like that after he sees. The season would be able to the dream catcher and all that stuff. Is it, that I guess you know Danny could have uh, you know Danny could have told him what happened. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, and also we get like narration during Tucker scenes, so like, yeah, you know maybe like maybe you know we're only getting the narration during the parts Tucker knows about. That's true. But yeah, this is kind of cool. Um, I really like this. Obviously, it's a really great reveal for this power. Um, I kind of like too. Like it happens unexpectedly for Danny. Like. Uh, because obviously he doesn't have control, because when he released this blast, like, he completely blasts, like, Desiree away. Like, you'll see later on, like, he uses this power again, but it's not like, he doesn't do, like, as much, he doesn't put as, like, much power into it as he does, like, here. So, like, you know, that, um, it's the first time he's used it. Obviously, it's a big scene, because, like, this is the, he basically uses this power, it's, like, his main thing, like, the rest of the show, pretty much. It kind of sucks, though, mm-hmm. because, like... We never really get to use this power in the video games, really. Because, obviously, like... I guess you kind of do a Nick 2 tonight. Because, like, you have, like, the fist. But it's... I don't I, I don't know if I would count that. Because it's... It, I don't really think it's that power. In Volcano Island, if you get, like, orange energy, you can shoot off, like, balls of energy. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I wish you could, like... Yeah, and, like, Danny Phantom video games, you can shoot lasers. Yeah. Well, in general, Danny Phantom got the shit end of the stick. Jimmy got, like, video games. Timmy... Sponge, they all got like their own separate video games, yeah. but Danny pretty much only got um like the Nicktoons crossovers and like and the computer games that we would play just like as a one off pretty much. Um, yeah, like, he, he never got like a like a main like GameCube, Xbox, like PlayStation, like like home console. Yeah. Um, game, which is weird because like I'm pretty. You sure figure he's like one of the ones that would like. Yeah. Like be the easiest to adapt to a game. I'm pretty sure Fanboy and Chum Chum like got something like that. Like some Nick show that like That's got sad. canceled. Huh? That's sad. Yeah. And that that was like not a good show. But anyhow, like uh, you know, I really liked this. And you know, I kinda liked uh I, I think the fit I I wouldn't necessarily critique it, but I kinda wish like we could have seen like Danny train a bit with this power because uh Obviously, because this episode takes place within, like, a couple of days, maybe he was training with it, like, off-screen, and we didn't see it. But I really don't know if that was the case, because as we see later on, it's not like Danny couldn't go to the Fenton Works, like, the ghost zone part, like, the basement to train, because his parents are staying there, like, most of the time anyway. So I felt like Danny kind of mastered this power, maybe a little bit, like, too quickly. Um, But I do, I will, you know... But I will say, like, what I will compliment, though, is at least the villains that he fights when he has to use this power, like, they're not, like, big villains. I think the biggest one is, like, Desiree and maybe, like, Tucker, but he never actually, like, really uses it on Tucker. So, like, you know. Um... He only does it at the end. Um, which, a, a complaint we had in the Dragon episode was that, like, the overshadow ability doesn't really matter much, like, in the episode. Like, it's for the subplot where, like, uh, Danny's having Jack, like, uh, chaperone at the prom. Yeah, but like overshadowing doesn't really help like defeat the dragon or anything like that. Um, so I'm glad here that like um, it ends up being important for defeating uh, Tucker. But yeah, I like um, this was, uh, but like you said, Danny hasn't like trained with it, so I'm glad he didn't like really rely on it during the fight. Yeah, like he just used it at the very end to like surprise Tucker. Um, uh, but this was good. But you know, I really liked how they set up the scene right here. It's really cool that Desiree was the first person that like used it on too. Like you know, you would have thought. I always kind of think it would have been, like, one of the villains that, like, comes back at me so often and all that type of stuff. But it's kind of cool. Because Desiree, we only see really, like, as, like, a main villain, like, twice, really. Because I know she shows up in other episodes, but really she's only, like, Danny's, like, main opponent, like, really twice. So it's kind of cool that, like... Yeah. You know, Even in this episode, she's not really the main threat. Which I actually like. I like that, um, like, the final battle of the episode is Tucker. Yeah. Um, Desiree is more so, I think, a means to an end, like, in order to get the plot to happen. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, yeah. But then, you know, um, they they cast the theme song pretty much, which was cool. I, th- I liked that. Um, Great theme song. And uh, then it cuts to uh, the ne- either that night or, like, the next day. Because uh, it's very ambiguous of, like, when the football game happened, if it was the same day as the fair. Because the fair was, like, in the middle of the day. But, uh, well, you know. And he says, like, he wishes he thought of that. <laughs> 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 How 
how appropriate that I'm sneezing since this episode has like all the characters have a cold in it. Yeah. Um, What's up, um, but yeah, Danny says like when, when he beats Desiree, it's been like five days. So you know, this could have been like the next day or the same day. But yeah, yeah. it doesn't really matter too much. But uh, you know, uh, they're at the football game, um, and uh, Tucker's there with Sam, who you know is sick, um, like. One in a fever, probably the flu, if I had to guess. Like, that's probably the sickness that they have, because it seems like the kid has all the symptoms. She's, like, sweated, pretty much, and everything like that. And, uh, yeah, Sam's even questioned, like, why she's even there. And, like, what a great school system, by the way. Let a sick kid just show up to your freaking football game. Great great school system right there. Didn't just be like, yeah, go home, type of thing. Um, but, uh, you know. That's, that's the real school system. Yeah. Um. Taco, you're sick too fucking bad. Yeah. But Taco reveals uh, that the reason that they're there is because uh, apparently Danny is uh, filling in for the mascot. Um, and uh, that's why basically that they're there. They were basically there to support Danny, which was, I actually thought pretty cool. They're, like pretty good friends with them and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah. Especially Sam. I also I mean, like that like Danny's like has like a life outside of, you know, ghost fighting. Yeah, um, unlike, uh, unlike he, you know, because like, you know, I like that. Like, he just gets involved in stupid shit like this. Like, you know, yeah. oh, the mascot's you know out sick, so you know, Danny has to, um, you know, be the new mascot. Yeah, you know, because like obviously, like uh, Ben Ten, uh, you know, to make an example, they're on summer vacation. Like, the main thing is like they're going on a road trip, and like you know, Ben is being a superhero. Yeah, even in later seasons when like it's not summer vacation, um, we get a couple episodes of like dealing with his like his school life. But um, it's never like a main focus. So it's cool uh, that they um, kind of took that approach, um, and everything yeah. like that. Very um, Spider-Man, you know, um, inspired. We're like, you know, he's struggling with both, you know. I think like more so. Uh, I mean, obviously, I haven't seen like the shows, but like this kind of more so the second movie, what you know, Peter's kind of struggling to keep a balance of his life and everything like that because he's had his powers for. Right. Yeah, that's a big thing. With Spider-Man too. Yeah. Um. um anyway, yeah. of course, it's not like a big deal here. It's just like a. It's just nice that, like, Danny's getting involved with, like, shit like this, you know? Yeah. I like it. And, uh, you know, Danny's being the mascot. It's the, the Casper High Raven. And uh, Danny gets, like, trampled, like, by the football team. And it makes sense, uh, obviously, because one of the guys on the football team was, like, Dash. So it kind of made sense that, like, Danny got trampled. Usually the mascot, it's a, a big thing, obviously, in shows that, like, the mascot always gets treated like crap. But, like, I kind of, I think it made it better that Dash was on the football team, because you know Dash set that up for Danny to get trampled like oh, that. Too. I um, loved, uh, you know. I also uh, like how their, their school mascot is a raven, obviously, because, like, Casper High and, like, everything is, like, Halloween-inspired in Amity Park. Ravens are obviously, like, uh, yeah, like the horror yeah. movie bird, essentially. And then, um, yeah, Danny's obviously, like, mocking. It sounds like this was Tucker's idea, because, uh, you know, he's basically, like, Saying, oh, great, yeah, fill in for the mascot. It'll be fun. You'll meet cheerleaders. That doesn't really sound like Tucker, something Tucker that would have said and all that type of yeah. stuff. And I, 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 that's also, like, a humanizing thing for Danny. I like that, you know, he's, um, yeah, you know, just like he thinks like a teenage boy. Like, in, um, in the episode where he, like, uh, has to pick the uh, beauty pageant winner. I like how he's, like, using it to, like, try and pick up girls. Yeah, that's Like, that's um, cool. when I played football in high school, you know, I was also thinking, like, I'll make friends, you know, like, I'll get in shape, um, it'll look good on, like, colleges, but also, so, I was also, like, meeting a cheerleader would be nice. <laughs> that, that so, like, sense. that is like, a legit thing, like, a teenage boy would think, you know, like, hey, you meet a cheerleader. And I like how there was, like, this final time where, like, uh, you know, because Danny got, like, trampled, and typically they do this good joke, like, in shows where, like, you know... Um, like you'll see like a flock of birds just fly by, but you'll see like this one that's just by himself and all that type of stuff, like trying to catch up with everyone. But I like, or like, uh, if someone's getting beaten up, they'll do like one final like beat down. Like Danny got like tramped up by like one final guy, like right after he did like his big speech and everything like that. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, let's, uh, after this, um, you know, a big thing that happens in the game is that basically, uh, Dash which is kind of funny to think this because like he's been hyped up as like this big football star. Well, that wasn't the case in this episode. Um, oh yeah, the joke was like every time anyone from Amity from uh, Casper High gets the ball, like the entire team rushes them and like dog piles them. Yeah, which I thought was great. And then uh, you know this keeps so happening. basically they're doing the uh, huddle, and Dash is like. 
dang it. Uh, so by the way, Dash is um, like normally, <laughs> like you know, it's like a monkey's paw situation. Like um, you know, where like the the wording gets twisted to like a bad way. The way yeah. Dad Dash worded this, Desiree didn't even have to really like do a monkey's paw thing. She basically just made Dash's wish happen. Yeah. So um, Dash was like, basically... "Dang, I wish I was so strong that I could beat these guys by myself." You know. Yeah, and Dash really didn't even like mean it either. He just kind of said it just to kind of like throw it out there. But like Desiree, of course, took it literally. So like, uh, you know, she shows up. Um, and, you know, she, like, uh, turns Dash into, uh, you know, um, into, like, this monstrous, like, ghost, pretty much. And, uh, this was really cool. Like, basically, Dash turns into a monster, pretty much. Um, and he's basically destroying everybody. And Danley kind of realizes this. And, uh, you know. Like, kind of realizes it, because he grew to be, like, 30 feet tall, and he's glowing green. Yeah. Um. In Ben 10, we kind of complain that, like, it's weird how everyone is super chill with, like, aliens and monsters. Like, no one seems to give a fuck. Um, and, like, Danny Phantom, we kind of praise a bit because, like, everyone seems to be reacting to ghosts. Like, a normal person would react. Yeah. Um, here, everyone's... Well, I mean, like, it, it, it's played for comedy, obviously. Like, yeah. even the commentators are, like, saying, like, oh, wow, what are they feeding this kid? You know? Yeah. Uh, what was... Like, like they make a joke that he's been drinking protein shakes, yeah, and that's why he grew to be like thirty feet tall. So but, like, I'm just saying, I like how we praise Danny for being realistic, and here it's like, no, nah, everyone's super cool with the fact Dash grew like thirty feet. That's true. I mean, I could kind of, I think I'll give him a pass. I know it would make us look like such hypocrites, but I think I'll give him a pass considering the fact that, uh, you know. Um, this was, they did it as kind of a joke this time, like, Danny, like, yeah, Danny, no, I don't think it's a lie, I, I think it's funny, like, again, when the commentator was like, wow, what protein shakes are they giving this kid, like, I thought that was funny. Yeah, so yeah, basically Dash now at this point is, like, kicking everybody's ass, and Danny realizes that he kind of has to do something about this, and, uh, he basically, uh, asks Taco for help, and Taco at first thinks, like, he's gonna be helping, like, Danny fight alongside him, but that doesn't end up being the case, we'll get back to that later. So then Danny, uh, Goes, goes. And this was kind of cool. Uh, Danny doesn't actually go and, like, fight Dash or anything like that. We're pretty much, uh, I think Danny would just wanted to do this, like, very quickly and everything like that. And realize that, you know, maybe if a big fight happened, uh, a bunch of people would have gotten hurt from this fight and all that type of stuff. So instead, like, while Dash is in, like, his huddle position, um, Danny uh, goes uh, intangible. And this was cool. So it shows, like, the ghost energy is really strong. Basically, I wish Danny did this more, too. Like, Danny basically takes... Uh, the ghost that's like possessing Dash pretty much, and basically like pulls him right out of Dash and quickly puts him in the fence zone. It's like that was so cool. Like, I used to not like this much as a kid, I think, because obviously you like to see the fights, but this was actually like really cool and made like Danny look like really smart and all that type of stuff. That he just went up and like quickly uh, grabbed him and all that type of stuff. Um, Although uh, my complaint is that, um, like you said, he doesn't really do this again. Um, <laughs> Like, his, the pl- you know, the big plot point of this episode is the ghost catcher that separates humans from ghosts. Yeah. So it's yeah. weird that Danny can just, like, rip a ghost out of someone. Yeah. Since, like, he, he typically needs, like, um, a tool for that. Or an, um, an ultimate enemy. You know, a big plot point is that um, in the future timeline, like, um, Vlad and Danny needed the, um, like, the uh, ghost gauntlets to, like, separate um, like, the human from the ghost. Yeah. So, yeah, that, I can see so, that. Although, I guess, I guess you could say, because Desiree later on says, like, Tucker's transformation will be permanent uh, in, like, a day. Yeah. So, maybe it's because, like, Dash and Paulina, like, they, like, just got their ghost powers. Yeah. So, that's, that's why they just, like, easily separate them. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and also, it, it's really weird, because we were talking about this, um, earlier, that um, Desiree seems to be able to just like create ghosts. Yeah, we talked about this a few days ago. Yeah, yeah. That um, like he she doesn't like make Dash himself a ghost. She like makes a cloned ghost of Dash that you can like separate. Yeah, and I'll I'll mention this too. Like when they when they get out of these transformations. Uh, it's, like, kind of the same thing as, like, when Danny possesses people. They have at least, like, some memories of it, but it doesn't seem like they have, like, the full memories. Because when, like, Dash gets, like, uh, separated, like, right afterwards, 
And, like, he still remembers to say, like, hike at the end of the football thing. Or, like, when Paulina gets separated, she's like, why do I suddenly feel, like, wonderful and adorable type of thing? And, like, when Tucker, uh, like, when he gets separated, he kind of, like, saw what he looked like. Basically, like, himself in the mirror and all that type of stuff. So, it, like, it seems right. like they have, like, some memories of, like, like these events and all that type of stuff. Like, when they're these right. ghosts. Um, which I think is kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, um... Continuing, um, you know, we find out that uh, Danny, um, you know, um, you know, beat, beat the ghost very quickly. We find out that Casper High still lost the game at the end of the day, and that basically, yeah. uh, Danny made them lose basically. Good job, Danny. Yeah, pretty much. He should have waited maybe a little bit. Um, yeah, no, right. But uh, yeah, um, basically, we find out that uh, usually when the uh, the home team loses, the mascot suffers for it. So, uh, basically, Tucker had to suffer for it. And then they do, like, this funny joke where he mentions, like, like, because he was filling in for Danny, he was filling in for the actual guy, which is funny. And, you know, we see, like, Tucker, like, uh, they threw him, and he's, like, landing, uh, upside down, like, on, by the, uh, touchdown, like, pole, or whatever. Um, and, uh, they do a funny joke where, like, Tucker mentions, man, every time Danny goes goats, I get the short end of the stick. And they kind of take it literally because, like, you know, a bunch of people come over with a bunch of sticks and are going to basically beat the crap out of Tucker and, um, as if he is a piñata and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, basically, yeah, like you said, Tucker had to basically uh, pretend to be Danny in the um, mascot, which, you know, um, I, I think before we made a complaint that um, – like a like um a character conflict would just be for an episode. Um, Danny's Danny's powers kind of giving his friends the short end of the stick is like a thing throughout the show. Yeah. So I am glad that like that's like that's not like a, just a one episode thing where Danny's being an asshole. Like, but also like it's I I can't really blame Danny again. Like he has to go like save lives, and he has and he had and he like pet makes his friends cover for him. You know. Uh, I, I, like it's uh, and it's and it's it's a uh, sorry, it's an example of him, like being kind of a jerk to his friends, but like it's realistic. Like it's not just him being an asshole from to create drama. Yeah, and I was gonna talk about this like after the movie theater scene, but I think we'll talk about it now. What's good about these is that it's not you know Danny's not like deliberately uh, throwing his friend under the bus. Like all the stuff that all the bad stuff that happens with Tucker is more like a coincidence than like you know. But he's like he's kind of like blaming Danny for it because you know it, it's just kind of a coincidence that it just happens you know because Danny has to go fight well, goats. I do also like Tucker isn't really mad at Danny like he's jealous but he's not like getting angry with him. Yeah. Um. Um. He's more upset about and, the situation. You know, also, Danny should re Danny should realize that everyone in this town is a sociopath. <laughs> like, yeah. like you know, hey, uh, Tucker, be a mascot, and then they literally hang him by his feet and then the shit out of him with baseball bats. That's true. That's very true. But you know, I feel like this I feel like this one did it better than when Danny meets his clone. Uh even though that one wasn't on purpose, that one was kind of a little bit more pur purposeful for, for like Danny. He was kind of like he was kind of more aware of it. Like Danny was like completely He was more aware of it and he was like more dismissive was the thing. Here Danny isn't really aware that Tucker is like getting bitter and jealous towards him. Like when Desiree points it out, Danny's like surprised. Like he didn't realize yeah. And at the end of the episode, Danny is like, hey, I, you know, I'm sorry. I should have been more aware of, like, your feelings. Yeah, so, you know, I kind of like how they it's, did this. They did a great job with the character stuff. Like, Danny and Tucker both had, like, issues, but, like, neither of them was, like, going out of their way to be a jerk. Like, yeah. it, it was, uh, like, it was an understandable miscommunication. Yeah, definitely. And again, it was more so, like, I would say, like, more pure coincidence. Like, a coincidence, like, in the movie theater that, like, the movie that the movie just happens to sell out, like, when Danny has to go, like, fight Paulina and all that type of stuff, like. Um, yeah. So, I liked that. And, you know, they they, they told this very well in, like, the Butch Hartman type of way. Um, you know, like, in threes, you know, like, for example, in Fairly Odd Parents, anytime Timmy wants to make his wish, they'll do, like, three scenes of, like, showing why Timmy wants to make the wish. So, here, they kind of did this in threes, like, uh, of Tucker getting like the short end of the stick and all that type of stuff. Right. Um, but we yeah. have to before we get to part three, we have to go to uh, Fenton Works real quick. Um, because uh, Danny goes back to Fenton Works, and this was pretty cool. Uh, Danny basically uh, connects the thermos to uh, the ghost zone, pretty much. There's like a compartment where you can open it, but like there's like a hole in there where like you could connect the thermos to it, and uh, basically uh, 
he puts like like dash goes in there and everything like that and he gets like sucked into the ghost zone and all that type of stuff this was cool because I, like we never get really get to see this happen ever again because i feel like this is the only time that we do see this happen and it's kind of cool to see like how it worked like how danny's been uh you know getting rid of all these girls like in the thermos and all that type of stuff um and this is also cool because like the slowly creating the ghost zone like world pretty much well because even though we don't know about it it's really cool to kind of see like how subtle they like set it up because obviously i think what in a couple more episodes i think we're gonna get like the go like the reveal of the ghost zone which is gonna which is cool how right. they would like subtly set, um like, well we talked about splitting images like we kind of already went there maybe because like the 1950 school like isn't explained like at all yeah. but like it's probably like a section of the ghost zone um, but yeah, I agree. Like, I like how, um, it's like slowly built up. Um, all three shows we've been doing, I've been doing a great job with, uh, like slowly building up. Like the Omnitrix has been getting built up in Ben 10 and Avatar, like, um, like Air Nomad stuff and like, you know, like stuff about the Sozin's Comet, blah, blah, blah. Like that's been all built up really well. Like all these shows that all came out at the same time have done like a great job of just like not dumping everything on you in one episode, but like yeah. slowly introducing you to these concepts um and then not Danny, really a complaint with this episode but like future episodes i kind of wish these ghosts came back like yeah. it's kind of crazy that like there's like ghosts of dash paulina and tucker just like chill them out in the ghost zone that we like we never see again yeah how is that gonna work by the way like i think i talked about this even though this isn't like versions of them but like uh, you know what? I'm not gonna open that can of worms right now because I was gonna. About to I, I think I think we said off screen like we kind of want to make a video on like like discussing like what the fuck are ghosts? Yeah, because like how's this gonna work if like when Tucker Dash and like Paulina? Because that's technically like even though that's not like them, that's technically like like them and the ghost. So well, like kind of is them. Well, like like Danny Phantom is Danny. You know, yeah. like like even the future him. You know, who's all who's pure ghost? He can he still can he's like my parents, what? my sister. All this that. Video yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. We're getting off topic, but just like point is, yeah, we'll make a video on that in the future. It's just it, that's a big thing in this episode that we're like we're just gonna ignore it. We'll make a future video on it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, so then but this Danny, is really weird. Again, this is just really weird. Yeah. But then Danny, uh, you know, uh, he flies, and I really like this. Like he flies, like you know, about to fly off screen type of thing. But then uh, he flies right into basically a dream catcher, pretty much. Uh, like device, and uh, he separates his human self separates from his ghost self, and like they both notice this. They do like a really good job of this, like where like Danny and like his ghost self like stare each other down, and like his ghost self just basically just goes right back into Danny, um, which is just really cool. And like uh, Danny actually is obviously like you know a miss. He still doesn't know what the heck just happened. And then uh, you know his parents come out, and they're also sick also. Um, and we find out that. Uh, Basically, what they think happened is that they're basically, uh, ha what, have, like, a, um, they, they've been induced with ghost energy, pretty much, and, uh, they basically made well, it um, They're basically, like, in this big tent that's, like, steaming out of it. Um, I like how they come out of the tent, and Danny is like, do I want to know what you guys were doing in there? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, obviously, a dull joke there. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. I actually didn't catch that, mainly because, um... You know, I was thinking they're sick. You're not going to go do that type of stuff when you're... I mean, I wouldn't anyways if I was sick. But anyway. Well, like, then they explain that they're sick and they're, like, they were in the tent to um, try to purify the ghost energy from them. Yeah. And then Danny's like, uh, you could just have, like, a common cold. And I like how they both... Well, yeah, they both walk away. Like, I remember when I was that naive. They're yeah. like, Danny's so dumb for thinking this is just a normal cold. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but we find out... Well, like, like it reminds me of... Um, the Technus episode where uh, he was checking all of his devices um, for like FBI uh, surveillance. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm gonna do but yeah. So basically, Danny right. like sticks his hand into um, the um, ghost catcher. Yeah. And realizes like, oh, yep, yeah, that's it. Um, this this one actually works. I got to stay clear of this one. Uh, I'm gonna do twenty um, minutes, by the way, because we're still. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, we're like kind of fine. Yeah. Um, so. Um, this is a really cool invention. Probably one of my favorite inventions is the Fentons of Dawn. I wish it got used more, because uh, it only comes back in, like, one episode after this. Yeah, um, a really good one. I really like this, too, because, like, you know, it show this was, like, probably the most dangerous invention I think they probably, like, ever made. Like, 
I feel like too, it def they definitely changed how it worked in the episode when it comes back because obviously here when Danny gets separated, uh, he's still like his normal self and his ghost is still his normal self, but obviously it's different. Like because obviously when they separate, uh, but later like, on, like you know, like when da Ghost Danny overshadows Human Danny, like it doesn't actually put them back together. Yeah. Um. Although at the end of the episode, they make a joke that like Danny used the wrong side of it, so I guess here he just used the right side. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so that was good. Yeah. Uh, let's go. Yeah. What was I gonna? Um, I um, so the next scene is the, uh, oh yeah, we also like, we didn't say it yet. So the reason Sam is not in this episode much is that, uh, she has a cold. Oh yeah, I said um, that. I said, cause I mentioned that's why, uh, she didn't want to be at the game and all that type of stuff. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause well, um, yeah. So like basically everyone has a cold in this episode. The Fentons have a cold and Sam has a cold. Yeah. Um, Jazz just is like, I don't know. She's doing her own thing. Um. She's sick. But, um, yeah. Yeah. She was sick to be on Yeah, she's also sick. Yeah. Um, she, yeah, she's a real bad. She's like dying in the hospital, but no one cares. <laughs> um, but yeah, next scene, um, the next day, Tucker and Danny go to the movie theater to see the new, um, like horror movie. Um, I like how when they're walking, Danny like phases through, like, like instead of walking around something in his way, he just like yeah. phases through it. I and thought... it, like, no one even notices. Like, I think he just did it, like, on like reflex. Yeah. I think, too, uh, like, I don't even think Tucker noticed it either. Like, he just kind of went on about his way. When I first saw this well, episode... They're probably, this is probably just, like, normal for them now. Yeah. But, uh, you know, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, but, like, when I first saw this episode, I thought this was an accident. You know, obviously, because this is still early in the show, I thought that, I just thought Danny didn't know how to control his powers. But then when I watched it back, I'm like, oh, wait, he did that on purpose. That's that's actually how... Well, I think it was more like he, he just did it on reflex. Like, like he, he wasn't even really paying attention. He kind of just did it. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. You know, kind of like, um, you know, kind of like if something, th if someone throws something at you, you kind of just, like, try to catch it or, like, your arms kind of move on their own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, they're going to go see the new horror movie. But um, <clears throat> um, Paulina is there. Her and her friend are looking at um, Hello Kitty base. I don't remember what the name of it was. It was like um, like Sayonara Pussycat or something like that. Yeah, something like, like that. Yeah. Very clearly, just hey, it's Hello Kitty. Um, they're like saying like, "How man, I wish I was as popular and cute as um, as you were." Desiree is kind of just she just kind of just shows up randomly. Like I like I don't know why she's always just hanging around Danny. I feel like they don't really explain how this works because like. Is like uh when you say I wish, does that like does it like a trigger that like she has and all that type of stuff? Um, you know, because it's just really weird. Like, what a coincidence! She just happens to be like in the area, like uh when someone just says, yeah, I guess she's just like bumming around town, granting wishes. I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't I think she wish. really even has a plan. She just like hears I wish and starts running. Um, oh, I remember what I was gonna say earlier, by the way. Um, because I was gonna say something about the Fentonwork scene. The more we kind of talk about it. I remember I asked earlier, um, you know, was it that in Tucker's perspective? Was that in Danny's? That was the defense work scene. I think was definitely in Danny's perspective more so than Tucker's perspective. I think. Yeah. So. Um. So, yeah, Desiree comes by and grants Pauline's wish, and um, everyone turns to her and then she's like, "You pointed out I I noticed the Hello Kitty reference. You said that this was an anime reference, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I think you're right. In terms of like, um, I think it's drawn like." More so like an anime character than like a cartoon character. Type it's a very small, big head, big eyes. And everyone is like obsessed over her. So I guess basically Paulina's like new appearance makes everyone like adore her. Yeah. And then um, it's all getting to Paulina's head. Um, <laughs> and that's a big ass head. Um, so yeah, you know, like everyone loving her and like saying they love her, like is making her bigger and more powerful. And then she decides... Hey, I shouldn't just be restricted to one movie theater. I should be loved by everyone around the world. Um, so this is probably setting up, you know, the fact that like there's obviously a big plot hole about this, you know, like a monkey's paw. Like probably the, Paulina was had Danny not stepped in, she probably would have stayed this way like forever after after a certain amount of time. So. Yeah, it also seems like like um, the ghost power like makes like makes you more evil. Like, like Dash went from wanting to win the game to like being, like, super violent and crazy. Paulina wanted to be rich and pop, like, fit, like, uh, all loved and popular. And now it's, like, twisted that, like, she basically wants to, like, rule the world. Yeah. And then Tucker, of course, later on, wants Ghost Powers to be, like, Danny and, like, be cool. And then it ends up getting, like, twisted and he just, like, ends up abusing them. Yeah. Like, getting these Ghost Powers seems to, like, twist you. Um, 
Because Tucker is like surprised at how he was acting later on. Like it seems like he wasn't really in control of it. Definitely. Um, so he's Pauline here also seems to like not really be in control of herself. Uh, what's weird is that like um, everyone in the movie theater is like loving Paulina and like becomes like brainwashed by her. But uh, Danny and Tucker aren't for some reason. Like like maybe Danny because he like maybe you could say like oh he's resistant because he's a ghost. Yeah. But like Tucker also seems to like not really give a shit. Yeah, uh, I feel like uh, this is, could have been like the time where they could have introduced the like those earwings that Sam wears in the Amber episode. Let's make sure let's make sure like not you know not control of it or like the 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 belts the deflector belt type of thing so that way taco wouldn't have been in control of it um it was, yeah uh, i don't know why he would be wearing that though but um i'm just saying oh, you, know, you could even say like maybe tucker does get controlled and then like he's and then and, but danny doesn't and he's like oh and that's like another reason why tucker would want ghost power so he yeah, could be would... like so he wouldn't be controlled and stuff yeah um well maybe, yeah, because, basically, uh, maybe um, tucker's jealousy yeah. overtook uh Maybe him not being controlled because he was like kind of frustrated, like that he was gonna have to deal with this now. So maybe like that's why Tucker didn't get controlled because of his jealousy. Yeah, basically he's upset that like Danny's like, hey, I gotta go deal with that. Tucker's like, all right, you go do your thing. I'll go get us like seats. Um, yeah. So Tuck, Tucker, you can definitely tell is like getting more upset with this. Like he's getting more annoyed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Danny basically goes and uh, deals with Paulina. He like takes her to like the back room or something like that. And um, kind of, he just like shoots a laser at her, and that like pushes the ghost out. Yeah. And um, once it leaves, Paul, I like I I, gotta, I don't know how Danny is doing this. Like, and he, it never happens again, so it's like really weird. He does uh, do this again one more time, but that's it. Does he? Okay. Yeah. Um. When? The episode like uh, when like Walker's crew like take over the town when though everyone's like for, um being overshadowed, he uses like his ghost laser to like push some of the ghosts, like, out of them and all that. Oh, stuff. okay, okay. Um, yeah. You figure he would have done that in the episode with the hospital. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I kind of just wish this was explained. Also because Danny doesn't have a good grasp of his power yet. So this seems like a... This seems like a complicated thing, like, separating someone from, like, like yeah. a ghost. Um, it does seem like Danny like, did this. If this was, like, later season two, season three, Danny, I could buy that he can do this. But, but, like, since he's still, like, an anchor, it seems weird. Yeah. They did kind of explain it, because, like, I think Danny did this just to try it, because, like, after he, like, defeats the ghost, he even says, wow, that actually worked. I can't wait to talk to So it seemed like Danny just kind of, like, was kind of throwing... He kind of winded... Was kind of throwing shit at the wall to see if it stuck type of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess he's just experimenting. Because, like, with the Dash one, I'm like, yeah, okay, he, like, reached in physically and ripped it out. Um, for this one, I was like, he just shot a laser and ripped it out. How the fuck does that work? That just yeah, but, work. um... What would happen? I mean, I guess nothing, but, like... I guess, I guess he would have killed Paulina. He would have shot her in the head and she died. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Paulina gets separated. Paulina goes back to normal, and, then, like, the ghost... This is interesting, because, like, the ghost of Dash, like, looks like Dash. And the ghost of Tucker looks like Tucker. Here, the, the uh, ghost doesn't really look like Paulina. It looks like the Hello Kitty knockoff. Yeah, so that's um, weird. Yeah, and then Danny just pretty easily like uh, puts it in the Fenton thermos. I mean, he, he pretty... deals with Dash and Paulina really quickly in this. Um, I mean, there's not really much, there's not really time, but like I do kind of wish like they had a bit of a fight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I wish they would have had a little bit of a fight. I guess. Um, I think because some of it we didn't see. I feel like the Paulina fight they probably didn't, we didn't really see on screen either. Because then they kind of focus on Taco, like, during that time of the fight and everything like that, so. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure they don't fight. I'm pretty sure Danny just, like, shoots a laser at her, separates the ghost, and sucks uh, the ghost in. And then, like you said, like, hey, I can't wait to tell Tucker. Um, I do like that he's, like, excited to tell Tucker. Um, like, again, Danny's not purposefully being a jerk. Like, he doesn't realize Tucker's, like, getting jealous of him. Yeah, definitely. So then, uh... At the movies, we find out that uh, the whole movie they wanted to see sold out. Um, and Tucker basically got stuck watching it. It wasn't even the Hello Kitty movie, too. It was just some random other movie. It looked like a B version of that movie, honestly. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and like, no one's there, pretty much. It's kind of like, you know, uh, a lame movie, pretty much. Like, no one wants to see it. Mm-hmm. And Tucker's upset about it. I don't know why he went and saw that movie, though. It was weird. <laughs> it was like, why? I don't know. Like, Danny assumed he went home. Yeah. So, like, 
Why didn't you just go home, dude? <laughs> but, so, so I know we, I, I know we, we can blame t- Danny for some of the. We can't blame Danny for this one because you bought the tickets, dude. Like, what are you doing? Like, right. You wasted your money on it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But yeah, uh, basically, Tucker's just doing this big rant about like how uh, Danny gets all the glory and he's sick and tired of basically getting the short end of the stick. And he's basically had enough. And uh, Tucker basically says that he wishes he has ghost powers too. And then the uh, the genie shows up and basically, uh, you know, um, gives Tucker the ghost powers. Um, I feel like Tucker should have reacted a little bit more because obviously, like, he's seen the genie before, but it seemed like this was kind of like quick. Like, he didn't really like. He gave. Yeah, he like, knows the genie's bad news. You know, like I, I guess the like, ghost powers like corrupt him, and like he's like not thinking clearly. Well, like he changes like on a dime. Yeah, it would have made like I you figure it, he would have been a little hesitant with um, yeah. you know, because Desiree he knows Desiree is like bad news. But I feel like it would have been better like if Desiree granted the wish and she didn't like he didn't like see her because like he saw her like full on like when she was like he. She it's had, also like, weird because Desiree like didn't go up the dash in Paulina like they like, like she just granted the wish without them knowing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. So it is weird that she like went up to Tucker and is like, "Hey, by the way, I'm granting your wish." Yeah, so that was weird, but yeah, Tucker's happy. He's got the ghost powers, and then uh, you know, Danny. I think everything happens with the Paulina stuff that you said, and then Danny shows up to the movie. Um, I love too because like, had Tucker like maybe just like waited, um, they literally because they legitimately could have just like snuck into like the movie because Danny just basically goes in there and is just like, oh, I guess Tucker's not here type of thing. Like basically, like yeah. basically, uh. They, they could have just snuck into that movie, but, uh, anyhow, uh, you know, Danny leaves thinking Tucker left, but that's not the case. Tucker is basically, uh, intangible, and, uh, he's basically, like, goofing around. He eats people's popcorn, he drinks somebody's soda, and he, uh, basically put, makes somebody put their arm around, uh, some chick, and she, like, beats the crap out of him, and Tucker, you know, basically is pulling planks. Um, at first I thought it was kind of weird, like, how did Danny's ghost sense not go off? Because obviously Tucker was there, but I'm going to guess, like, they probably, like, just missed each other. Like, Danny probably left, like, right at the point where Tucker came in or something like that. So I was yeah. going to guess that's what happened. And, um, um, I do like what, you know, like like I said earlier, I like that, like, Danny's, like, getting involved. Like, he's a mascot, and, like, he's going to the movies and stuff. Like, he's acting like a normal kid. Uh, same with Tucker. Like, if I were, you know, I'm 23, and I'd still probably be doing this. <laughs> but yeah. especially when I was 14, if I got ghost powers... I would absolutely be pulling pranks on people, like, just for the shits and giggles. I mean, in a weird way, I, I kind of like that this was kind of like an episode, like, centered around, in a, like, what if Tucker got ghost powers? Because in the beginning, I definitely think, like, Tucker, this is definitely Tucker having somewhat control of it, and then obviously he loses control eventually. Um, I mean, he's not, he's not being a malicious right now. Like, it, it gets worse and worse throughout the episode. But, um, like, here he's, like, he said, like, you know, he wants to be a superhero like Danny, too. And it's later on, he's like, no, I don't really give a shit about being a hero. And then, um, uh, yeah, then outside the movie theater, there's traffic. And one of the guys is upset that he basically has to sit in traffic. And he basically makes a wish that, like, his car could just, like, fly through stuff so he wouldn't have to see there. And the genie grants the wish. And then, like, what happens? And he's, like, a, he's like a surfer hippie dude. And he's, like, on the way to the beach. Yeah. I like, too, like, um... She makes the wish, like, through the radio. He's like, wait, this isn't my station. And then, uh, you know, um, yeah, um, yeah, basically his car flies through the air. And I like how Danny comes out, he sees the genie goes, and he's just like, oh, my gosh, don't you ever take a break? Like, there was just a, la- like, Danny's yeah. line right there was really funny. I always thought it was funny when I was a kid. So then Danny uh, goes ghost. He's about to go handle this. And then, uh, you know, um, t- he sees Tucker come by flying around and everything like that and tucker's even like don't sweat this one danny i got it and danny kind of stopped and like he's like in shock that tucker's basically got ghost powers now because obviously he just he didn't even know T- uh tucker was a part of this or anything like that and this was a good time like they they actually picked a good time to go like commercial break like with danny shocked that tucker had ghost powers that was like a really good time placement for the commercial break i thought that was good and then yeah. um at the call well in, inside the call Tucker's trying to basically put a stop to the situation, and uh, I like it too because they do like a they do like a reference to the show where Tucker comes in and says, "Don't what sweat it, dude." Tucker Phantom's on the case, and Danny comes in. And he's just like Tucker Phantom is like totally ignoring the originality of that. Um, well, obviously that's a reference because that's the name of the show. So like obviously, uh, oh yeah, you know. Danny calls himself Danny Phantom. Yeah. Um. But um. So two things. Well, well one, I like how um. 
I, I don't know if you just said this or not. Sorry. But um, uh, Danny makes a joke. Like, he calls the guy. He's like, hey, slow down. Something Gordon. Oh, yeah, I looked it up cool. later. Yeah, um, that Danny referenced a, a, a real-life NASCAR driver. Um, like like the um, like the George Clooney reference in episode two. Yeah. It's just oh, it's always weird when Danny Phantom like references real world people, you know? Yeah, really. Yeah. Like, well, there's weird. cartoons in general, really reference real world people. Um, yeah. Um, and um, well, like in SpongeBob, they referenced the Red Baron. Yeah, um, they did. Which is really weird because it's a German World War Two pilot. Yeah. Um. But um, also um, in, in this episode, you know, I kind of wish Tucker got like a um, like a ghost form. Like later on, he like turns big and green. But I wish he kind of got like the uh, Danny Phantom, like like a palette swap kind of thing. Yeah, me too. Because it's literally like for now and for most of this episode, it's just Tucker, but he's like glowing green. So like, did he was he just a ghost the whole time then? Like what? It, um, That's what I'm saying. Know, yeah, it's not even like he's half ghost. He's just like just a ghost, I guess. Um, but then he didn't interact with anybody else on like on screen really. That because like it would have been funny if like he just went to class and like someone called him out the fact that he was like glowing green, like thought he was sick or something like that. Like that would have been like really funny. Like well, I think he's only like glowing green when he's using his powers. Yeah. But um, yeah. Um, but yeah, the guy is uh, going too fast, and he's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tucker shows up, and Danny's like surprised. Wait, Tucker has ghost powers? Why? Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically Tucker and Danny both like um. You know, go intangible and go into the car. And uh, this guy is, like, freaking out. Listen, this guy's a surfer, dude. This guy's probably so high <laughs> that he, like, thinks all of this is, like, a hallucination. Well, he even says later on, uh... Well, I'll talk he calls about them the hallucinations, yeah. Yeah. But going through this, uh, you know, um... Oh, yeah, he's high, like, he's flying. Uh, yeah, there you go. But, yeah, uh, you know... Tucker basically tries to take control of the situation, but he doesn't really do it properly. Uh, he tries to basically, like, take hold of the wheel and just drive, which is just not what he should have done at all. And even Danny even says, like, you know, Dad, you're not, this is not, we're too young to drive, basically saying, like, you're not handling this at all. And then uh, Danny basically has to step in because uh, they were about to crash into the building, and Danny basically makes the car go intangible, so that way uh, there's not, like, a big crash yeah. that happens or anything like that. And this kind of gets Tucker upset. Tucker kind of calls Danny out, basically talking about like uh, how Danny was kind of showing off right there, and you know, Danny basically even tells Tucker like, like he always do this stuff, and Danny's like, uh, yeah, when we're gonna like explode into like the fifth story of a building, yeah, I need to step in. Yeah, like Danny makes a good point of like, yeah, we would have just died if I didn't do something. So why the hell are you getting upset? Yeah. So then, uh, you know, they're they're so busy arguing with each other that they don't like realize that they're about to crash into like a. Uh, What's it called? A silo? The like the thin across the bottom, the silo. Um Yeah, like a farm thing, like what's like chicken feed in it. Yeah. Um and they cra and but the too busy arguing, so they end up crashing into it. Luckily nothing too bad happened. They uh you know, all of the feed goes uh, you know, just spills out and uh, you know, the guy uh got out of it unscathed. And it also could have been, you know, because he's high as shit and like did you know, he doesn't feel any pain right now. He'll probably get, he's probably gonna be feeling that tomorrow. Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, he like bleeds out and dies. <laughs> but no, I even love too the way he reacted. Like it's just it's only because he's high because there's like a chicken on his head. Like he's like, "Shaw, there's a chicken on my head." Like, dude, you're high, dude. Like you are, yeah. you are screwed up. Like, it's gonna be you should not have been driving in the first place. It's gonna be hilarious to like think what he realizes later on that like Danny had like ghost powers he was probably thinking all this time that he was just like it was just hallucinations and he's just like oh i thought it was just because that was high that like that guy it's gonna be yeah. later on that like the, what he saw was like real that's hilarious um yeah he, but um the guy, Dan, the guy probably getting, like went to like rehab and he probably like went to like you know talking therapy like i, I was seeing things that weren't there and then uh you know, after Danny revealed himself, he probably went to like his meetings and stuff like that, and be like, "See, that was one. I guess those were hallucinations." Yeah, see, I wasn't high. Well, I was high, but I that was real. I mean, I knew it. <laughs> um, anyhow, so yeah, then Danny and Tucker continue arguing pretty much. Uh, Tucker basically tells Danny that there's, um, you know, more than one superhero that can like basically save Enemy Park, which Tucker does have a good point because obviously that would lessen, you know, um. Danny's stress. Yeah, if, if Tucker wasn't like getting like all messed up by like the like like if he wasn't like getting like his personality twisted, this would have been like 
this would have been great, you know? Like, um, they yeah. go like, oh, great, now there's two ghost superheroes that can, like, deal with stuff, yeah. And then, uh, uh but, you know, Dad even says, like, uh, that Taco really doesn't know how to, like, be a hero and all that type of stuff. He talks about, like, uh, you know, how Taco just almost got them killed and everything like that and couldn't really handle the situation like he could. And basically, Tucker just kind of tells him to stay out of his way. And I really like this, because you're seeing early stages of, uh, you know, anytime Tucker gets, like, jealous or everything like that, he gets more powerful, because, like, when he flies, he, like, speeds off and, like, flies. And even Danny points out, like, wow, even I couldn't fly that fast. And I'm like, and he was like, is he getting more powerful? And I kind of like, you know, that was, like, a small setup to it and everything like that. Oh, it seems weird that Danny's saying, is he getting more powerful? Like, because this is the first time he's seen Tucker with powers. So you figure like this would be he would say this like like if this was the second time like like if Tucker like had powers earlier in the episode and this was like the second time seeing Tucker use his powers that's uh, true or or maybe if he said it in the next scene where um he tries to overshadow Tucker and he can't yeah that would have been better um, yeah no, this was a weird placement to say that but like it gets the point across that like um yeah Tucker just got his powers but he's like already like more powerful than Danny yeah um. Yeah, the um next scene, it's um yeah. So um, Dan Tucker is basically like, pulling pranks at school. Um, no, they have heard the he's at the uh, the deli. He's at the deli. Okay, this is the deli first. I was about to say is that after? Yeah. So uh, basically, Tucker is continuing to pull pranks with his powers. He um is like using his intangibility to like put his, like, head on, like, a, um, like, a meat platter and, and like, a, a store window shell. So, like, it looks like it's, like, it's, like, head on a platter. And he's, like, freaking out everyone, out everyone who comes by. And, uh, but while he's doing this, he's, like, talking with Sam on his, uh, PDA. Yep. But then, like, obviously the PDA only shows his head, so Sam doesn't even know any of this is happening. Which is really hilarious, yeah. And you pointed out, like, at the end, they don't ever explain this to Sam, so Sam has no clue any of this episode happened. Which I think is kind of cool, like, uh, that, you know... Um, they kind of have, like, their own plots going on. I kind of wish we had more of this, where, like, you know, Danny and, um, Sam dealt with, like, a ghost, but, like, Tucker didn't know anything about it and all that type of stuff. But, yeah. Like, well, we kind of get that, like, all the, the girl episode with Sam, Jazz, and Maddie. But that episode sucked. Really? I liked it. Um. Well, it didn't, it wasn't as, it wasn't great. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll get to it when we get to it. But, um, um. Yeah, so basically, like, you know, they're just talking, and, um, I mean, do you want to talk about this scene? Because yeah. I'll, I'll talk about the So they're just talking, you know, uh, basically this is, like, roughly a couple hours, it seems like, after, uh, everything that happened, like, at the movie theater and, like, the car scene, and, uh, Tucker, uh, because Sam even asked, like, why didn't you guys see a movie today? And, you know, Tucker just said, like, they got a little distracted, and he basically kind of plays it off, because Sam thinks it's just because Danny had ghost trouble, and Taco just basically, he doesn't lie to her, he just said, well, you could say that, because, you know, it's kind of telling the truth, but he's not, like, telling her, like, fully what happened, and, uh, you know, then we get kind of back to Tucker's, uh, perspective, and basically says that, you know, he didn't want to tell, like, Sam about his powers, because she wasn't sure, um, like, how she would react, based off how Danny reacted, and everything like that. And, you know, I think this uh, kind of brought on the point, like, I kind of like that this kind of kept Sam out of the episode, because I feel like, you know, this basically kind of talk talked about that. I feel like, you know, Sam would have been kind of an odd fit and everything like that um, about all of this. Um, I, and, you know, I don't think it would have worked as well, obviously, because, you know, it wasn't really about, it was more about Danny and Tucker's dynamic and everything like that. Yeah. So uh, There is one funny joke with Sam, like, when she's sick, and obviously her parents are rich. So, like, they have, like, a full, like, um, hospital staff on standby. Yeah, that was funny. That was funny. Yeah, but, like, besides that, Sam's only in this, which I think, like I said, like you said, is, like, a good thing for the episode. Yeah, and then it's everything uh, at school, pretty much. Yeah, so uh, the um, school scene, Tucker's continuing to pull pranks. I He puts soda, I mean, in, like, a, a dude's, um, like, uh, tuba while he's playing it, like, the, a band guy. And it causes, like, soda to, like, go out of his nose and ears and mouth. Um, and um, he uh, causes Mr. Lancer's, like, uh, uh, to get hit with a water fountain water and, like, his pants to come down. And uh, I like the c recurring joke of Mr. Lancer whenever he's, just, he's surprised. He says, like, a book title. Yeah. And here he says, like, movie dick. Obviously, it's, like, you know, supposed to be him being, like, like swearing. Yeah. Um, 
Um, so Tucker's like around the corner uh, laughing at what he just did. And Danny's like, hey, you having fun? And uh, I like how Tucker isn't like upset with Danny. He's like, fuck, dude, come on, relax. Yeah. And he asks like, hey, Danny, what's up? And Danny's like, oh, I think I'm getting sick. Um, you know, because obviously at the end of the episode, they're both have a cold. Um, which, you know, not a super big plot point, but I like that they uh, set that up. I think uh, this was good too, because like, he probably didn't even get it from Sam. He probably got it from his parents because, you know, he was around them, like, early in the episode. So it kind of shows, like, you know, it, it's not just random. He's getting sick all of a sudden. I mean, I don't yeah, think... Yeah, I, I think Danny gives it to um, Tucker later on. Yeah. But I think, you know, um, you know, uh, I know people just get randomly sick, but it just would have been kind of weird that like, all of a sudden Danny just happens to be sick all of a sudden. I feel like he caught it more yeah. so from his parents than, like, Sam type of thing. Yeah, because I don't think any of them were around Sam this episode. So, yeah, I think Danny got it from his parents, and then Danny gave it to Tucker. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and it, that's not super plot and point. Um, anyway, um, Tucker basically says, like, yeah, you know what? I don't really care about the superhero thing. You can keep doing that. I just kind of want to have fun and pull pranks. Um, so Danny's like, yeah, he's just, like, abusing his powers. And then uh, he also knows something's wrong. Like, Desiree probably did this. Because, um, you know, Desiree did the last two people. Um, yeah. So Danny tries to do what he did with Dash and Polly, and he says, hey, sorry, buddy, but I kind of got to go inside of you. Uh, no homo. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, Danny over tries to overshadow Tucker, but um, probably probably because um, Tucker's had his powers for a bit longer than Dash and Paulina did. Um, uh, he, like, Tucker, like, gets angry and, like, just pushes Danny out of him and sends him flying into, like, the janitor's closet. Yeah. I wonder what, um, like, from, like, the... I'm assuming what happens inside, the ghost just pushed him out. Like, you know, it would have been cool to get, like, an inside shot of, like, what was going on. That would have been cool, but obviously, uh... Yeah, yeah. Luckily, like, the ghost that Tucker basically just was like, nah, -uh, I'm already taking... I'm already renting this place. Yeah. Like, um, but, yeah, basically, Tucker threatens Danny and says, like, don't ever do that again. And even Danny was, like, scared. He was like, Danny was like, oh, yeah, got it. Yeah. Um... But um, I, Tucker's narration says, like, okay, I was a little um, mean here, but hey, no one likes a party pooper. Man, was I having a party. So, um, likely Tucker's narration, like, when I re remembering this episode, I thought, like, this was Tucker saying everything in hindsight, like, at the end of the episode. But I think Tucker's narrating, like, as the episode goes on. I think what happened is, like, earlier, um, like, the first scene is probably, like, uh, yeah, it probably is actually when everything's going on because he doesn't mention anything that happens. Like, we see him like writing on his PDA at the beginning of the episode and like at the end, yeah. So, like, this isn't him narrating in hindsight, I think this is him narrating like as the episode is going on. I think, uh, there was one that I think happened like later on because, uh, I say that because, uh, because he because it because when we find out everything about uh Desiree, it's through Tucker's narration. I think that one was later on. Because right, and like it's it's it, like Tucker wasn't even there. Yeah, you know, like how'd you know about the parts you weren't there for? Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, Tucker's continuing to abuse his powers. Uh, Tucker um, possesses Paulina. Uh, remember that that um, that really creepy clip where um, that became a meme where Tucker was uh, was like, "Hey, Danny, if you could like possess a girl for two minutes, yeah. you know." Like, Tucker yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um. And then Danny sees Tucker doing it, and Tuck Danny goes up to him. And Tucker has Paulina is like, oh, hi, Danny. Just so you know, um, you're super lame, and you should stop following me. I'm, like, going to go date Tucker Foley. Yeah. And Danny's like, Tucker, just get out of there. Like, he knows it's Tucker. Um, Wait. I mean, he saw it happen. He's not, like, Tucker, like, there, too. So it's, like, you know, it's not, like, you know, he didn't instantly know. It was just yeah, like, he, he didn't, like, sense it. He just, like, saw. Like, Tucker wasn't being subtle. Like, he was standing behind a tree and then, like, went to possess Paulina. Yeah. Um. This causes Danny to possess Paulina as well, and then like they're both. I, I don't know how to word this without making it sound creepy. But anyway, they're both possessing Paulina, I guess. Um. And having an and, um, pretty much. Like like Paulina is talking out loud, and you can tell like who's who. Like uh, when uh, Paulina's eyes are glowing green, it's Danny talking, and when uh, it's talk when they're glowing blue, it's Tucker. And they're just having an argument with each other, like while. Possessing Paulina. Yeah. Um, I liked it. But I liked about this, hmm? um, you were probably just about to say this, but what I liked about this is like during the argument, when it was Tucker, like they, like when it was Tucker, she would like stand 
facing forward, but then it was Danny like talking. She would like turn away. Right, they go back and forth. Yeah, well, like there's two Paulinas talking to each other, but like it's just them like turning their heads basically. Yeah. Um, I wonder how this looks for them. You know, like in their point of view. I know that's why I wish we could. I mean, that's what kind of sucks. Like you don't really get to. See, you don't really. I kind of wish that they they kind of missed a chance. I mean, this looked cool too, but it would have looked cool like if we could have seen what was going on, like inside. Like, were they just like, like were they like this maybe, and then like arguing that way, like in like a contained like area. Like, how did this work? Like, that's what it looked like. This right, because like you said, they keep like turning, like like they're facing each other when they're obviously not. So it's it's interesting. Yeah. But um, basically, Tucker's Danny's saying Tucker's abusing his powers and like he can't keep doing this. Tucker's basically saying that, like, Danny's jealous. He's basically projecting because he's jealous of Danny. Now he's saying Danny's jealous of him. Yeah. Um, um, and he basically lets it slip that um, Desiree, um, you know, gave him these powers and he can do with them what, they, what he wants. And he mentions uh, Babalita. And then um, Danny leaves Polina and says, like, okay, well, I'm going to go ch- have a chat with this uh, Babalita. But Tucker screams at uh, Danny that they're not going to be friends anymore. Yeah. Uh, then he leaves Paulina upset, and everyone's like, "Oh, crowded around Paulina, staring at her." Because you know, it looks like she just had a schizophrenic episode where she's just like screaming at nothing. Yeah, I liked that. Uh, that's why I liked this because like this was really good that like they showed like the background characters like reaction to this. Because at first too, it looks like like no one's really like around her like as this is going on but then you get to see like what how what everybody else reacted like everybody just right it does like this is like close up you only see like pulling his face and then you do a wide shot and everyone's like what the fuck i mean in bed they would have just like gone about them every freaking day though like they would have just like, right right it was normal so um but, uh, it's also funny just pulling is like the popular girl so imagine like the most popular girl in your school just all of a sudden starts screaming like having a conversation with herself in the middle of the hallway and again, this kind of brings back to the point that it seems like you do have some memories when you have, because uh, afterwards, like, Paulina even says, and I never was friends with you, so she does have, like, memories. That but she remember her saying, I'm not friends with you, Danny Phantom, or Danny Phantom. And then yeah. she's like, oh, I never was. Yeah. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, this, as you said, uh, Tucker's narrating what Bobolita says to Danny. So this is likely, you know, we don't actually hear Bobolita or Danny talking in this scene. It's Tucker's narration of it. And I think they so, had to um, do this too because the episode at this point was going was uh, wrapping up pretty much. They had to fit the fight with Danny and Desiree, and then the fight with Danny and Tucker. They, I feel like they did this probably more so for time purposes, probably right. too. Well, also, it, it, since it's Tucker, near, it's likely that like, like Danny told him, Tucker about this like after the fact. So, yeah. like you said, like everything is probably like narration at that point, but like this is probably like after the fact, after everything's over. But yeah, going through um, it. Um, it by the way, um. You know, added to the counter of ghosts that were absolutely alive. I think we're at six at this point. Yeah. Like, um, um. Yeah, I think we're at six. But we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll talk about it after the fact. But basically, this is how the story goes. Um, this is, I think, Aladdin inspired because they mentioned Sultans and how she was supposed to be like the princess. And um, uh, I think Desiree looks like um Princess Jasmine from Aladdin, like in a way, like like it's very much inspired by her. I also had, I was kind of watching this and I was thinking to myself, did uh does Butch Hobbin not like genies? Because every genie he like makes in the show in his shows are always villains. It's like does he not like genies or something? Does he think they're bad? I think that's like supposed. To, well, that's all like what genies generally are, right? They do like the monkey spot thing. No, because uh, not I mean not always, but like the genie in Aladdin's not. I mean, a I mean the, the guy in Aladdin is like the only good guy genie I can think of. Um. I think most genies are usually villains. No, there has to be another genie that's good. Um, I mean, probably, but I'm usually when I think of genies, they're like typically villains. I was just about to say, well, what about the genie in this movie? And I was about to say the Aladdin like live action remake. But that's exactly the same thing. But oh, the, yeah, the Will Smith genie. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, yeah, I'm sure. It's- but yeah, yeah. Um, basically, he. Um, the backstory is uh, Desiree was a harem girl um, for this like uh, rich guy, rich noble. Um, like you said, you know, Aladdin inspired. This is this is likely like India or like some region similar to that. Yeah. Uh, based on like the architecture and the clothing, but um, yeah, she was a harem girl that like the royal loved and like wanted to give her everything, but um, his like legal wife was jealous and kicked her out. 
Um, and then um, <laughs> the uh, apparently Bob Alita says that uh, she died of heartbreak and old age. <laughs> Which one? So was it? Um, like, yeah, die of both. Well, bro, well, I guess I guess she died of old age, but she was just miserable. For, well, that's pretty fucked up. Yeah. That she got like she um, got kicked out of the harem when she was like a young lady, and then spent the rest of her life heartbroken. Yeah, <laughs> that's like so, super dark and fucked up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much. And then uh, it's revealed that when she became a go, when she died, it became a ghost. She basically became like, um, they didn't really explain how she became like a genie though, like a genie ghost. They just kind, of, I guess, they just kind of explained like she became like a ghost that. Granted, everyone the worship and desires, but there was like you said, there was like a monkey paw pretty much all the time. Everything like that. I guess it's kind of like every ghost kind of has like a thing. Like the lunch lady controls lunch or like yeah. food. Box yeah. ghost controls boxes. I guess because like it seems like if you're like whatever thing you did in life, kind of like translates over to being a ghost. Yeah, but again, we can't ask much help with this because he's not a ghost, so we can't ask him. Right, 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 right. Even um, though like clearly say he's alive and then die. Um, yeah, again, like, like I was saying before, I, I think it would have been better if she was, like, a genie, or, like, a human who became a genie, not, like, a ghost genie. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I mean, I don't know, whatever, it's, a, it's not a huge deal. But, um, yeah, basically, like, now in light, now that she's a ghost, she grants people's wishes, but, um, like, um, it, 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 like, it never ends well for her. Like, it shows, like, her, um, giving, um, like, granting a wish for, like, this, like, Robin Hood-looking guy. Um, and then, like, he got a bunch of money and then, like, fell in love and she kind of got pushed to the side. Yeah. So I can't, I feel kind of bad for her. It's weird because they never, like, do anything with this, like, making her, like, sympathetic. Um, they kind of change this, they kind of change this, too, because when she comes back later on, for some reason, she all of a sudden gets more powerful with every wish she granted, which is like, ah, uh, that's not how that works. That's not how we were told that works. Like, um. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe she got more powerful later, but, like, they never, like, said that. Um. <clears throat> No, but, like, uh, the the time she comes back, it seems like they changed, like, how it worked. Because, like, this time it didn't, but the next time she's like, yeah, I look more powerful. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, they, like they never mentioned, like, her being more powerful here, yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, going through um, it, uh, Danny... Uh, you know, I like the backstory. Uh, I'm, like, I'm saying, I just kind of wish they did more with it. Because, like, they make it really sympathetic, and they just, like, don't do anything with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then, uh, you know... Um, yeah, Danny uh, is trying to basically to attract uh, Desiree because you know he still doesn't know like how to like solve Tucker's problem pretty much um, because like you know he doesn't know how to like undo his wish and everything like that. Um, so then Danny, um, you know, tries to use a wish about to basically attract her and doesn't work. I guess he just didn't make a wish because like he puts the coin in and she just doesn't show up. So then I guess he just didn't make a wish. Um, or maybe this is the whole Poindexter thing, you know, where he just, she just let that one slide, like, uh, Poindexter let, like, Dad yeah. slide. I like to think that's it's what happens. It's mostly Danny. Life just sucks for Danny. Right, um, right. and then this guy shows up. But this, this motherfucker and Danny must have the same barber. As a kid, I was like, this guy's gotta be, like, Danny's cousin or something, because he looks, like, he has the same haircut as Danny. Yeah. Oh, I want to bet you something I liked, because I just noticed this when I watched this today. I like that when it showed, like, a widescreen of, like, Danny, it showed him with the Fenton thermos. It was really cool. Like, he actually had the Fenton thermos. Like, you know, it wasn't, like, a thing that he just... Yeah, like, continuity. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, like you said this in the SpongeBob episode, actually. Like, typically, like, when the, in a cartoon, they're, like, the character will be holding something, and then next shot, it'll just, like, be gone. Yeah, it's cool here that they, like, keep in mind, like, yeah, Danny has the Fenton thermos on. Yeah. Because, um, like, uh, you know... um. What has up happening is uh, this guy like wishes for a million bucks, and uh, you know Desiree's about good to wish, grant... good wish. Yeah, Desiree's about to grant his wish, and what I really liked about this is like uh, Danny noticed this is gonna happen. He still has got the thermos, but like uh, when he goes over to the guy, he like grabs him so Desiree can't grant her wish and everything like that. He basically it's just cool. Like Danny basically like interfered in the wish so it couldn't happen, which is actually like kind of cool. Like. Yeah, and then um, the guy is, like, Danny's, like, holding him, like, bridal style, but then he sees, you know, he's, like, getting held by a ghost, and, like, there's a ghost genie in front of them, and they're, like, about to fight, and he's, like, oh, you know what, money isn't everything, and, like, runs away. But what I liked about this is, like, because Danny didn't have the thermos here, there was, like, a good out for this, because, like, it's implied that Danny just put the thermos down real quick just to grab this guy, so I actually kind of, like I was saying, I like that they kind of kept up with the continuity, like, he didn't just not have the thermos because of, you yeah. know, it was, like a, wasn't, like, a continuity error and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah. 
but um, basically Danny in, is um, asking Desiree what sh- uh, what she did to Tucker and like how to reverse it. Um, and Desiree explains that um, like um, she's getting fueled by like his jealousy for Danny. So maybe that's why he's so powerful. I kind of forgot about that. That she says like he's he's like jealousy is making him more powerful. Oh yeah, right, right. And um, I mentioned this to you. You haven't seen Star Wars, but what she says here <laughs> made me remember Star Wars. Where um, Yoda says that um, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. Yeah. And that's basically, like, Tugs, Desiree doesn't say that, but she basically says something similar to, like, the jealousy and bitterness is, like, turning into power. Yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, this was cool. I liked this. And then the, uh, you know, the fight happens. And uh, Well, I, I like how Danny's, like, surprised. Like, he's like, what? Tucker isn't jealous. Like, is he? Yeah. <laughs> like, um... Like we said, like, you know, I like how Danny wasn't, like, being an asshole to Tucker, like, on purpose. Like, he he generally, like, didn't know. He, like, he didn't, like, he was being insensitive by not thinking about Tucker, like, Tucker's feelings. Yeah, but, like, definitely. you know, he, he didn't know he was making Tucker upset and jealous, you know? Like, yeah, I agree. And then, uh, you know, um, we find out here that, like, uh, you know... The neck by the, by tomorrow at noon, basically the power will be uh you know complete. That he he'll uh basically trans transform into the most powerful ghost boy in the entire world. At least at that point, because uh I wanna I wonder what would have happened like evil Danny versus uh that Tucker. That would have been uh, I feel like evil Danny would have destroyed him honestly. Probably. Well, I mean she does she does say ghost boy. I mean how many ghost boys are there? Probably just Danny. Yeah. So, so like yeah. he will be the strongest ghost boy, i.e. like. You and yeah. that's it. Um, um, but I like, but you know, I feel like we mentioned this before. This felt like random to throw in there. I feel like they just wanted to get some drama towards like the end of the episode. It just kind of felt like this. Or like added random. Two clock, basically. Yeah, it just kind of felt like they kind of added this randomly, like out of nowhere, pretty much. Um, yeah, but you know, um, Danny tries to like uh, force her to change him back, and she refuses. Um, you know, uh, I like that there was this line where she mentions, you dare lay a hand on me, no man should ever lay a hand on me. Typically, like, you know, you're typically doing that line. I like Danny's response here. It's like, he's like, how about a fist? Which was like a really good response because no one ever really was. Well, I also like that she says, like, no man shall lay a hand on me unless I wish it. Well, one, I get, you know, a wish pun. But also it makes sense. She was a harem girl. So, like, you know, like, yeah. she's like, no man, yeah. hand, no one can lay a hand on me unless I wish it. Yeah. And then, um, uh, this is a really good fight. Uh, Desiree takes, like, her hand, turns it into, like, a lasso, and uh, wraps Danny's leg around and uh, slams him, like, and he goes right through a bench and just misses, like, this old lady that's, like, feeding the pigeons. And this was funny. And the old lady doesn't give a fuck, you know? She's just chilling. Actually, I think she's oblivious to it. She might be, because I don't think she realizes that this is happening, like, because she had, had, like, her eyes closed. And, yeah, she might. um, But this was cool. I like, I like, her, my headcanon is she totally noticed, but doesn't care. Um, and then Danny shoots the glow slays of Addo again, um, and sends, uh, Desiree back, and then, uh, Desiree, like, makes her hand really long, and, uh, forces Danny to the ground, and, uh, you know, Danny's basically stuck there, like, uh, he, he basically can't do anything, so Desiree basically thinks that she's won here, and Danny's like, Danny's like, oh, but I have a trick up my sleeve, he grabs the thermos, and, uh, basically wishes that Desiree will disappear inside the thermos, and, Desiree has no choice but to obey because that's her power, and uh, you know she does she does what Danny wishes, um, and Danny even says like, "Wow, if I was a C student, uh, I would have thought of that a uh, few days ago." Like you said, um, kind yeah. of a good joke there. Um, I I do like that Desiree was beaten now. Like I like even though she's the one who gets the plot in motion, I like that like the main villain of the episode is Tucker. Yeah, I think it made sense too because like it's about their dynamic and everything like that. Uh, yeah, Desiree got the ball rolling, but it's like it's about Tucker and Danny. Yeah, but um, now that it's like T- Danny knows there's a time limit, he um gets ready to go like confront Tucker. He uh goes to the school, um, and sees Tucker changing his grades in like the teachers' lounge to uh, all A's, yeah. which by the way is suspicious as fuck. <laughs> like like a teacher definitely would have noticed. Like, huh? How come Tucker's all A's all of a sudden? Yeah, this is that. I don't but, think um, this is ever. I'm done unless Tucker just goes and undo, undo it uh, later on. But like, yeah. So I, I guess as far as ever, uh, yeah, I guess Tucker has straight A's now. Yeah. Um, because they yeah. never undo it. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like how Tucker's being a smug little shit, and he's like, "Oh, hey, you want me to change yours too?" While I'm at it. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, Danny say, basically. Um, yeah, go ahead. There's, a, there's a, something I have to call out here because uh, a whole day goes by. Like, what Danny just couldn't find Tucker. He's like, well, there's Tucker. I can't find him anywhere. Like, you didn't go, like, you didn't go to his house. You didn't, like, you know, where the hell were you looking, dude? Like, like Well, he probably did go to his house and stuff and couldn't find him. But it's just really weird because it's, because I think that's thing we don't know. Tucker doesn't even know about this, like, time limit either. Like, he doesn't even, like, so, like, was it's not like he was avoiding him. I mean, I know they had, like, a big fight and everything like that. But it's, like, it just seems weird that, like. Tucker was, like, unfindable for, like, all... It just felt like, again, they, they threw that part in there, too. Like, it would have just been... It was just weird, like, like, he... Yeah, like, at the time, like, they basically had Danny not be able to find Tucker for a whole day, just to, like, like, the he only has a couple of minutes to, you know, save Tucker. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Danny tries to, like, convince Tucker to come with him, but Tucker ain't having it. Uh, his jealousy of Danny, like, he's too bitter, and, like, he wants to fight Danny, basically. At this point, Tucker turns green and his eyes are, or, and his uh, ears are like pointed. That was good. Uh, and uh, a fight begins. Uh, he basically knocks Danny through like three walls, and he slams into the uh, chemistry room or like the science room. Yeah. He hits the chalkboard really hard. Um, schools like don't have chalkboards anymore, so it was like I'm like, oh yeah, it's 2004. I forgot. Yeah. And you forgot to mention it's not like he just slams Danny into this. Like he blows like. Uh... A big puff of like smoke at him, like and like Danny like goes like and, like you said teleports like, like falls three rooms over like it was really cool like yeah uh, yeah and um they do a really cool slow motion shot while they're in the science room of Tucker like shooting lasers and Danny like slow motion running and like beakers in front of Danny are like getting broken yeah that was cool but um yeah basically Tucker is like way more powerful than Danny. Um, and again, it makes sense. He's getting like amped by like he's, he's like negative emotions, and um, you know, Danny's still like an amateur. He doesn't fully grasp his powers. If this were like season three, Danny and Tucker was like way better than him in like a couple days, it'd be bullshit. Yeah. But Danny hasn't had his powers that long, so I'm fine with it. I mean, if this um, was if this was if this was Neo, uh, I would expect this. Yeah, I know, right? He, he has his powers for like a day, and he's like one shots Danny and Vlad with one hand tied tied behind his back. Yeah, yeah, but um, uh, basically Danny can't really do much. They he ends up um, uh, they end up you know like throughout the school. I like how it's not just in one location; it's like throughout the school. Yeah, I like that. Um, um, they end up going to the um girls' locker room, and I like how um. Tucker's like the girls' locker room. I always wonder what it was like in here. Um, it, even though they do some fights for comedy, I like that there was still like a little bit of Tucker, like in, like there was still moments of Tucker like in there. Like, even though he's yeah, to... Tucker wasn't like completely like serious and like evil. Like he's still like kind of joking around like Tucker. Yeah. Um, like later on, uh, Danny is like, "Catch me if you can, sucker Phantom," and then Tucker gets like really defensive and is like, "Hey, it's Tucker Phantom, Tucker." Uh, um, I think he was in his monster form still, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying this is later on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, it's funny because they also do, in the, in the other Desiree episode in season two, they also do a girl's locker room joke. Where when Danny gets all of his memories back, like yeah. one, of, uh, one of them is like the girl, Danny, like sneaking into the girl's locker room. Yeah, that's funny. And then it shows a bunch of other important memories. And then it cuts back to Danny going into the girl's locker room again. Yeah. Which is uh, so it's weird. kind of funny. Right? It's kind of weird because you kind, that kind of makes Danny look like a hypocrite because he basically like. Oh yeah, it's, it's super creepy, but it's also like he is fourteen, so like I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it is really creepy. I'm saying it's um, he's being a little hypocritical because he he basically like called out Tucker for doing shit like this, and he was like, "You were doing shit like this too, bro." Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, he's literally like? from the girls' locker room. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. Danny basically like knocks Tucker. Um. Like, um, like he, I forget what happens, but like Tucker basically gets like a bra stuck on him and they end up in the gymnasium yeah. and then, uh, basically Danny like send him through like the basketball hoop and like the bra like lands on it, on his ass. Cause that Tucker was, is like folded like yeah. a pretzel. It looked like that. Looked uh, it was like, pretty, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically like Danny is like, can't beat Tucker one on, like in a, like, like brute force. But uh, he has a bit more experience, kind of like with Poindexter. Like Poindexter, he doesn't know how to use his powers, but Poindexter knows even less. Yeah. And um, and he's also like making Tucker mad and like getting him riled up. Uh, um, and yeah. like Danny, and he looks at the clock and like realizes like, oh man, I'm running out of time. 
and it gets Tucker to follow him by like, you know, like I said earlier, like calling him Sucker Phantom. Um, and uh, yeah, Tucker like yeah, gets like super beef, uh, super point, buff. And by this point, Danny already has like his plan in motion of what he's gonna do because like midway through the fight, he kind of realizes what he has to basically do to get through to Tucker. Like it's not like the whole fight, you know, he planned this out. Like at this point, Danny. I'm saying, like, yeah, like he, like outsmarts him and like not outbrutes him. Yeah. Uh, but Danny flies away and Tucker flies after him. Um. But at some point, Danny, like, um, well, yeah, Tucker catches him, and then Danny, like, goes invisible, and Tucker loses him. Yeah. And then back at Fenton Works, Danny is, like, above Fenton Works, and he's like, wait, where is he? Did I lose him? So, like, clearly Danny was trying to, like, outrun Tucker, but, like, not lose him. Like, he wants Tucker following him. Right. But Tucker, like, is, like, is right in front of him, and uh, he says a really cringe line. <laughs> He's like, yo, what's what's the uh, fizzle, or like, what's the sizzle fizzle, or something, shit like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, that was cringe. Tucker, ne- you know, I, I'm glad Tucker loses his powers. Tucker, you never say a one liner ever again. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Now, yeah, but um, he basically body slams Tucker into uh, Danny into Fenton works, but they go like intangible. And they're following. They're following for a really long time. They have a whole conversation while they're falling to the basement. Um, but yeah, once again, Danny outsmarts him and says, "Oh no, don't throw me into the ghost zone." Yeah. Um, clearly, like to get Tucker to bring him to the basement where the um, where the ghost catcher is. Tucker says, "Like you know, I wasn't even going to do that, but that's a great idea." I wonder what his plan was. Uh, yeah, I guess I don't know. I guess he was just going to kill Danny. I guess, I guess he was just going to kill him. Um, yeah, he just, like, snaps his neck and the episode ends. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, um, Tucker is bringing, they kind of, they kind of, uh, they kind of did this in Skulkers episode, too, remember? Yeah, they did do this, yeah, they did do this. So, you know, Danny's like, huh, you know, if I had a nickel for every time my villain brought me to the basement and tried to throw me in the ghost zone, I'd have two nickels. Yeah. Um, but, um... Yeah, and remember, like you said, we have we don't we don't know jack shit about the ghost zone at this point. So like getting thrown into the ghost zone is like this really scary thing that we don't know anything about. You know, we don't know what's what the ghost zone is like. Um But yeah, Tucker is like holding Danny and um Danny says he's only gonna have one shot at this because it's like one minute left. Um He's gonna shoot his lasers, but all of a sudden Danny sneezes and I like how Tucker lets him go and he's like, Hey, gross, cover your mouth. Yeah, that was funny. Um so, um, and then Danny shoots him with the laser, sending Tucker flying into the ghost catcher, separating human Tucker from the ghost Tucker. Again, it would have been cool if this ghost Tucker comes back, but, uh, no, we just never see it again. Yeah. Um, his Tucker's on the ground. He looks up and he's like, oh my God, is that me? Like Tucker's like baffled. He's like, you know, like he's back to normal. He, he like realizes like, yeah, clearly he's, he was like being influenced by the ghost. I like um, this though, because like. Tucker kind of, like, realized, like, how jealous... Like, this was kind of, like, Tucker... Like, him having to look at himself in the mirror type of moment just to see, like, what his jealousy, like, was doing to him and all that type of Yeah, like, what was turning him into, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Tucker... Uh, Danny sucks the... Uh, goes Tucker into the thermos, and Danny says, not anymore. It isn't. Um, and I like how immediately Tucker starts apologizing. Like, no. hey, man, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, Danny says, like, hey, dude, don't even worry about it. Like, you know, you were, like... You know, that wasn't you. Um, but Tucker says, like, yeah, but this wouldn't happen, like, if I wasn't jealous. And Danny says, yeah, but, like, I gave you a reason to be jealous. So I like that. that like, neither of them are really upset with each with the other. And they both, like, realize, like, you know, they had some fault in this. Yeah, I like um, that. Um, you know, I like that they both realized they had some fault in this. And, you know, I really liked uh, that it made, like, the friendship, like, even stronger, like, they talked about how friendship, how strong the friendship was, but I feel like them going through this like made the friendship, I think, like even stronger, which I really liked. Um, yeah, they both walk off happy, and I like how, like, obviously Danny is still Danny Phantom, like the, in his ghost form. They walk off, and then his parents like come out of the tent, and they're not sick anymore, and they just like shrug their shoulders. Yeah, like all that whole fight happened, and they just like were like must have been the wind. <laughs> yeah, um, that that was a good joke. I, that was probably the best. They've done, like, a lot of jokes recently where, like, uh, you know, they don't realize, like... The fact it's, like, oblivious to all the ghost stuff going on. Yeah, so this was the... the I feel like this was, uh, you know, the best one so far, I think. Yeah. 
But yeah, um, the, the episode ends basically. Um, Sam is better. The fencing is better. But now uh, Tucker and Danny are like sitting at Tucker's home, sick, and uh, Sam is like taking care of them. Um, you know, and Tucker's writing his PDA. So like this narration was him writing his journal. Yeah. Um, and I like how it ends with him saying like, "Yep, yeah, you know, I there's no one I'd rather have my back more than Danny." And Sam says, like, wow, do you two really need to share everything? Because they got each other sick. And uh, Danny says, like, hey, you don't know half of it. Yeah, because that's um, basically how they, got, they both got sick. Yeah. So, again, I like that. They're, like, they're sick together, and they're both kind of, like, you know, they're not, like, upset they're sick. They're both kind of just, like, happy to be spending time with each other. Yeah. Uh, and they're both, like, you know, no hard feelings between them. Uh, I really love Tucker and Danny's friendship, you know? Yeah, really good. Um. I really wish, by the way, like, I know, like, the, every episode's episodic, but we could have gone, like, because I remember you told me before, like, in an episode of Ben, there's an episode where he has to, like, use his watch, but he's, like, sick. I kind of wish we could have got, like, an episode of Danny. Like, maybe, like, right out, like, the next episode would have been, like, Danny still being sick, but he still has to, like, fight ghosts and everything. Yeah, well, like, like in the Ben, when, when he's sick, it's, like, affecting his powers. It would have been cool if, like, Danny's, um, like, you know, going ghost, like, the cold transferred. And he kept, like, shooting lasers out of his nose or something. Yeah. Um, that would have been funny. I feel like, though, it's tough to do that because, like, you know, Danny's still early to his powers here. So, like, I guess like, there's really not much they can really, like, do with it. And I guess because they did the bit with, uh, with uh, where he gets the ice power, that kind of was that episode, I guess, you know. Um, yeah, well, it was like the power was making him sick, kind of. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm saying, unless we had, like, a full-on episode where he was, like, sick like this type of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. That episode ends, you know, on a, on a good note. I really love this episode. Um, great episode. Good Tucker. You know, like, it's the first episode that, like, focuses on Tucker and not Danny. Um, I mean, the first episode to focus on anyone that wasn't Danny, if you think about it. Like, that's, like, the first. Because Danny's been the main Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, this was a good one, you know, and it was on their friendship. Um... Tucker is one of my favorite characters in the show, for sure. Um, and, you know, this episode did a good job, like, establishing him. Because so far, he's just kind of, like, been Danny's friend. Yeah. But here we got a lot more into, like, his thought process. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I yeah. give it a B plus. I feel like, too, this is, like, the first time we really got to see, like, um, real ghost fighting in Danny. Because, like, it's been, we've been seeing it, but it's been, like, in spurts. Like, usually it gets interrupted by, like, like, a scene, like, with, like, Jack and Maddie trying to, like, find the ghost, or, like, like, I remember seeing yeah, yeah. images. Yeah, the fight with Danny and Tucker, like, didn't get interrupted with, like, a B-plot. There really wasn't even a B-plot. Like, yeah. I guess the B-plot was, like, the Fentons and Sam were sick. Yeah. They only had, like, three scenes, you know? But I uh, remember... Well, it's funny, because we mentioned that in, um, Splitting Images, I believe, that, like, we kind of wish the episode didn't even really have a B and C plot, like, they were really unimportant. Yeah. Um... This episode did a good job with that. They were like, we don't need a B-plot. Like, let's just have a really good A-plot. I feel like this was, like, the first time, though, where, like, there was, like, no interruptions at all. Because if you think about it, like, the Skulko scenes, when they get into a fight, that gets interrupted by, like, them trying to keep it from, like, Jack and Maddie. And then, like, uh, the uh, Technus scene, when he's fighting Technus, that gets interrupted by, like, the drama with, like, Tucker and Sam, like, being mad at him. Um... I'm trying to think yeah. of, like... Uh, I, I, guess this, I guess this works because, like, it's a fight between Danny and Tucker. Yeah. So, like, the drama is, like, they're friends and they're fighting. So, I kind of... That's um, what I'm saying. Like, I really liked how, like, uh, this was, like, the first time we saw, like, Danny fight Ghost. And it, for the most part, any Ghost he fought in this episode wasn't, like, interrupted by anything. It was, it, like, continued, which I thought was good. Yeah. Um, um but you're very honest, you know, I give this a B plus. I might give this an A minus. Like, it's a really solid episode. It's yeah. a good Tucker episode. Yeah. Desiree's a fun, like, gimmick villain. Yeah. Um. And you know, Danny's really likable in this episode. I mean, Danny, it, it's that's... really hard. It's really hard in shows to make like an episode drama, like where the character isn't like an asshole for no reason. This episode did a great job, like making Danny like have faults, but yeah. like it's not out of character, and he's not like being insensitive. I mean, we just saw the episode. What's up? I feel like this did it better than like the garage show, the attack of the. Because remember, he's kind of that way. Too. Right. Well, like we liked that, but like we we were both like, yeah, it's, it's a Danny's being like a little out of character with how insensitive he is. So this um, one was a lot. This one was not super out of character, but like it was a little. Here, like he's pretty in character, and he's you know like I don't blame him for anything. Like I don't really blame Tucker or Danny for anything they did in this episode. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. And you know, really, yeah, really I like, give this a minus. Yeah, I give this a minus also because then uh, you know the biggest thing we got like uh, Danny's ghost way got introduced here, which ends up being like the you know it, super important. Yeah, yeah. This becomes like his most used power. And the yeah. villains were good. Like I liked Desiree. I liked. I mean, Tucker was technically a villain, so you know uh, that was good. Yeah, he was like the main villain. I, I think it's really interesting that like Tucker, that like Desiree wasn't the big boss. Yeah. Like I like how Desiree got beaten, and then it was on Tucker because the episode was about Tucker and Danny. Because I think this is the first time yeah. where we saw like the main ghosts, where like they weren't like the main villain. Because typically, uh, you know, um, yeah, Skulker, Technus, the Lunch Lady, yeah, um, Poindexter, right. yeah. So. Yeah, that was yeah cool. I give this A minus. Uh, great episode. And that's, uh, I think that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for watching this episode. Um, yeah, nothing else I can really think of to, to say. Um, just make sure you guys uh, check out this channel because you're going to see a lot of content come up. Uh, we're going to record, we're going to try to record something at least like every day, the week of, um, you know, before Easter type of thing. Um, and then, um, we're going to try to get some more stuff done. Like AJ and I are really ready to fade out content now, you know? So, uh, yeah. I mean, we have been, but like, we're ready to actually sit down and like physically like record it and everything like that. So that's good. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, I mean, that's basically my plugs. I don't know. Just check out this channel, Rest of Fortune 44, cause AJ might be doing something with that, uh, wrestling related. Uh, not that yeah. anyone, uh, he might be playing a wrestling game sort of even though yeah you know, that'll be fun so check that out um and then uh check out casual mania and that's pretty much it. Uh, i mean is there, is there anything you want to plug or not this time no i'm hot and i'm tired let's end this bye see ya